Hey everyone, this is Jana Rose. Welcome to my channel. I have a commentary and recap on Love and Marriage Huntsville. This is season 4B, episode 26, and it was called Destined for Better. You guys, this episode again, oh my God, between Martel and Melody and what is going on with Kimmy, this was a ride, okay? A ride. So I'm not even going to keep y'all. Go on ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and your notification bell. That will help others find this video. And as always, I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Now let's get started. So you guys, the scene opens at Stormy's. She's actually shooting a commercial for Canvas Beauty. Um, Tiffany is there. She's going to be one of the models. And then Melody arrives. They all decide to take a little break and do some girl talk. Then Melody congratulates Stormy on the peace party. She said that things went so well that Destiny invited her to her photo shoot. Stormy says, say what now? Who invited you and why? Did she tell you why she wanted you to come? Like she's looking for all of the details. Melody's like, no, she just asked me to come. Stormy said, oh, so you went in blind. Tiffany was also shocked to hear that Destiny invited Mel, but she said it was a good gesture. And she asks if her and Destiny were friends now. Melody makes a face like, what the hell? And production actually plays a sound of a needle scratching a record. Then she said, I went, we talked a little, I laughed a little, and then I showed her how to pose. Then things get a little overproduced here because we know that neither Stormy or Tiffany are that involved in Melody's life. But both of them start over talking each other and they are like, oh, that's deep. And it looks like you guys are working on it. And you guys have too much time in to just, you know, abandon the friendship. Then Melody said it wasn't that deep at all. We agreed to be cordial, but we're not friends. In confessional, Melody says, I cut Destiny off for a reason and she finds it annoying that Tiffany and Stormy are trying to force her to keep the friendship. Then Melody shares that she is going to Destin. She said, me and the kids are going to Destin like we always do. It is important for me to keep continuity and normalcy for my kids. And this time, she also invited Martel and his mother. Then we get another fake scene from Tiffany and Stormy. They go back and forth with each other over Melody inviting Martel and his mom. Tiffany is cheering it on. Stormy is like, you shouldn't have done that. Then Melody let the girls know, I'm in a good place. I'm happy. And when you're happy, nothing disturbs your peace. Then she says she sees growth in Martel. She said he's not hurt, angry, and bitter like he used to be. She said that he's not sending her family photos anymore. And when she said all this, it really felt like she was trying to leave some clues behind just in case something horrible happened. Then the ladies asked if she had any concerns for how the kids might take it. And Mel said that her kids were very mature. She said that they understand that this is just a trip, but they will not be getting back together. Tiffany tells Melody that she is proud of her for making the decision. And Stormy just looks concerned. So next up is Destiny and her cousin Demi. It looks like they're at Destiny's um, old house, the one that actually just went up on the market not too recently. Um, but they're at her house and they do a toast to their new partnership collaboration. It's called Madani and Demir. Then Demi shows us a couple of lipsticks that are a part of her product line. Destiny said we should throw a party and invite all the girls. Demi says you should. You know we're all in the same industry now. And I'm guessing she means the beauty industry, but that only applies to Melody and Stormy. Then Demi runs off her history with everybody on the cast. She's like, oh, I know Melody and Martel. I went to school with Martel. I did Melody's hair and makeup for her wedding. She also did Tiffany and Kimmy's makeup and she met Tisha through someone else. So the Huntsville streets are small. Then they start talking about the peace party. Demi said that she thought it was a great idea and that she really liked Mel's comment. We need to normalize not dealing with each other. To which Destiny responds, yeah, I think I agreed on that. Then Destiny says, well, Melody came to my photo shoot to support. And y'all, I thought it was funny because she didn't say she was invited. Y'all remember she made it a big deal of saying she was not invited to Madani. Then she said, we talked about everything that led up to our little, well, big fallout. Then she said, we can be amicable, but I will never forget. Now in the last scene, Melody said she cut Destiny off for a reason. Now Destiny's saying she's never going to forget. Clearly, they are never going to let us know what happened. I know that we've all heard the rumors that are out there about Destiny and Melody's ex. 
But I can't even see Melody saying, you know what? We can agree to be cordial, speak when we go into a room, things like that. I would think that we're never speaking again, period. But Demi says, it sounds like you guys are in the same position and it sounds like it's really bothering you. Destiny quickly says, but it really isn't. In confessional, she said she had a chance to see who Melody becomes when a friendship is in opposition. And what she saw is enough for her not to want to deal with Melody ever again. Demi tells her cousin, I can tell that there's still a part of you that gives an F, okay? And if Mel told you that she loves you, which Destiny chimes in and said, she did. She told me that. She told you that after you asked, girlfriend. But she said, if she told you that she loved you, she wanted to talk it out and resume the friendship, what would you say? Destiny responds, no. Then Demi said, I respect your answer. Well, based on the scene that I saw last week, this definitely sounds like a lie, but she's trying to save face. What I can say is that Demi has been in two short scenes and we already know she knows half of Huntsville, so she's not worried about a village. She owns her own business and she's able to communicate with words and not a bunch of facial expressions. Next scene. So we have Melody and her mother. They are getting the kids ready to go for the family trip to Destin. Um, Mel tells her mom that Martel's mother, Marlene, will be coming. Miss Van says, I haven't talked to her since you guys divorced. Then she asks, how did the meeting between the two of them go? Mel said that she confronted her on calling her lazy, but she said Marlene had some things of her own to get off her chest, um, but they were good now. Then Miss Van said that she was happy that Melody and Martel could make it to the place they're in now. Then they show us Martel and his mother, who's also getting ready for the trip to Destin. Martel said that he is both excited and nervous to take the trip. His mother says, just remember, it's about the kids. He said, I'm going to remember that. However, it's about me and Mel too. Marlene says, I know it. And then she says, we used to have some good times. And it really is just a reminder that everyone grieves the divorce process. The parents, the grandparents, the kids, everybody. Then Martel shared what the Scots told him about taking the kids on a family vacation. They said it was bad because it was going to get the kids hopes up. Marlene says, you and Melody have to do what's best for you. And at the end of the day, it is about the kids. In confessional, he said he was okay with the children being hopeful. He said he didn't know what the future was going to bring. And it's possible him and Melody could get back together. Then we switch back to Miss Van and Melody. Miss Van asks if the kids knew Marlene and their father were coming. Melody said yes. When she asked her how they felt about it, Mel said we didn't have any long convos. She also said that she didn't plan to have any serious conversations with Martel on the trip. She just wanted to keep positive vibes. But there was something about this scene between Melody and her mother that was giving me calm before the storm, okay? Next up are Maurice and Kimmy. Uh, they are leaving her first chemo appointment. She said that she has a total of 16 treatments over the course of 20 weeks. Then she has surgery and then she has radiation. She said that when her doctor gave her the diagnosis, he told her that there was nothing positive about having a triple negative. So she was very fearful that the PET scan was gonna show cancer in other places. However, nothing else was detected. In confessional, Marie said that because Kimmy is a medical professional, she knows what she's dealing with. However, he has no clue. And that statement right there hit for me because I know how frustrating that must be for Kimmy to sit in the room with a doctor, have her tell her something, and then look over at Maurice for some sort of support. And he's, you know, completely clueless, but he's trying to be positive, like, we're going to get through this, we're going to fight it, da, da 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 But she has to then explain to him what the doctor told her so that he can console her the way she needs to be consoled and fight through this. But last week, Maurice posted to his IG that Kimmy was really close to ringing the bell. So she's almost finished with the chemo treatments. And then she'll be moving forward with surgery and radiation. 
When Kimmy makes it home from treatment, her family is there to greet her. Um, it's Jalen, her parents, her sister, and her niece, and they are letting her know that they are there to support her every step of the way. Kimmy said that she brought her parents from Baltimore um, to Huntsville because she was like, it was my time to take care of them, but it looks like they are going to be taking care of her. Kimmy said that she knows her journey is going to be a lot on her family especially Maurice because Maurice is a fixer and she said he can't fix this. Then she joked that she was a thug at heart and she's going to get through this and that she was happy she has a village. Next we have Mel. She didn't pack the kids up and they are on their way to Destin. Mel said it's typically a five hour drive but with the kids it'll be around six. Then Mel asked what their favorite memories of going to Destin were. Little Boss Baby said, Daddy wearing flowered shorts. And Mel just went, okay. Then she asked Tank and he said, all of them eating together was his favorite memory. Mel said, watching them build sandcastles was her favorite memory. In confessional, Melody says that toward the end of her marriage, the kids were exposed to a lot of tension between her and Martel. And it is really important for her to create new and positive memories for them. Then they finally arrive at the beach house and the kids are super excited. So is Melody actually. Um, the kids are running from room to room, exploring everything. When Melody finds the master, she says, this is us, right sugar mama? My room is your room and your room is my room. Then Martel and his mother arrives, okay? He comes to the door, he knocks. I don't think anyone answered, so he just opens. As soon as he walks in, the kids jump on him. Everyone's, you know, hugging each other. Melody comes downstairs, she hugs Miss Marlene. She reaches over, she hugs Martel, and it's she's trying to be as friendly and welcoming as can be, but you can also tell that Martel is nervous. He has this controlled nervousness. But at the same time, he's giddy as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like you just, if you're paying attention to him, you know that he is happy. Martel comes in with gifts, okay? He left his luggage in the car. He brought his keys, a hat, and apparently some crunch and munch. He said that's Melody's favorite snack. Mel points out that it's the wrong kind. However, it's the thought that counts. And I felt like that stung a little bit because he really wanted to score some big, big points with that damn crunch and munch. But Mel said that they were off to a good start and then she gave them the rest of the schedule for the day and tomorrow. She said, listen, we've ordered in pizza and chicken wings. Tomorrow we're gonna have a chef. We're also gonna go to the beach. We're gonna go go-kart riding. They're all hanging out and join each other's company and then the food arrives. Everything that Melody ordered was wrong. She asked for lemon pepper chicken wings, buffalo chicken wings, uh, sausage and pepperoni pizza. She said nothing she had was right. Martel comes in. He's like, the food is here. He's excited. He knows the kids are hungry. Mel said, listen, I don't play about my food. Martel said, well, you know, maybe you do now. We haven't been around each other for a minute. Mel said, well, I didn't play about my food when we were together. And I still don't, okay? She was like, I ordered lemon pepper and buffalo chicken wings because that's what you like, right? But they didn't give us that. I ordered a sausage and pepperoni pizza because that's what you like. You still like that, right? And while she's telling him this, I swear to you guys, this man is genuinely giddy. He doubles over he throws his hands across his mouth. He's definitely giving me a 13 year old boy. Oh my God, my crush just talked to me vibes. I really wish they would have asked Melody what she was thinking when she watched him do that because that was wild. Sheree, AC, whomever the ladies are that's supposed to be with this man right now. This was genuine. I don't even get the hell out of here. In confessional, Martel says that Melody is being very authentic and that a lot of the old chemistry is still there. In fact, it feels the same as it did back in the day. Anyways, Martel said that he's not picky. He will eat what's on the table, but it feels like Melody ordering all of Martel's favorites, even if they didn't arrive, set the mood for the perfect storm because all of the energy has changed to mommy and daddy being happy. Kids are very sensitive to energy. So Boss Baby was like, well, if y'all having a good time, oh, mom, look, you and dad are wearing the same color shirt. Now, white is a very common color and Mel and Martel could have just said that. But in confessional, Melody said, 
They didn't coordinate it, and Martel damn sure was not in her closet. Then Melody shows Martel their sleeping arrangements. In an effort to be funny, but not really, Martel says, we're not sleeping in the same room, Mel. Melody responds, I didn't say we were, and then she stops. She huffs, she grunts, she stumbles over some words, and she looks at the production team, whoever it is, like this MF here. Then they cut to commercial, but usually when they come back, they'll give us like the last three to five seconds of where they left off. This time we just got a new clip. Melody lets Martel know that her and the kids will be sleeping on the second level. Him and his mom will be sleeping on the third level. Martel says, I want to be on the same floor with my kids. And Melody says, what? And he knew to reel it in because nobody, absolutely nobody believes you wanted to be on the same floor with the kids. You want to be on the same floor with Melody. In confessional, Melody said, I'm not going to debate with Martel where he sleeps. He better enjoy this free trip, okay? Then for some reason, production films the last scene of Mel and Martel in the room that Melody is going to be sleeping in. Melody's face is looking all dewy fresh, and then she asks Martel how he feels about everything. Martel says that it feels like old times to him. Melody responds, um, okay. But Ray Charles can see what's being implied here. Then Martel asks the same question of Melody. Mel said it's been a long time since they were all together vacationing with the kids and that her only focus is positive energy and good vibes. She repeated that several times. Martel said, I don't know why it wouldn't be. Mel responded, well, yeah, you usually say that until, you know, a situation arises where it's bad energy and bad vibes. So then Melody said, get out of my room and close the door behind you, okay? Then Marty starts doing this joke routine that you could tell was something the two of them used to do or laugh at when they were married. Listen to this, y'all. Then Melody is half giggling, but she jumps off the bed, runs over, pushes Martel all the way out the door, and then closes it behind him. I told you guys earlier that it was the recipe for a perfect storm and I'll be damned. In confessional, Melody said, it's a no. We're not sleeping in the same room together, same bed together. We ain't holding hands together. It's a no, none of it. But y'all, it looks like somebody put something in Martel's spaghetti and Mel's gonna have to get something to remove it because it's not going away. But that's how it ends. You guys let me know what y'all think in the comments. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit your notification bell, and I will talk to you all on the next one.